Do you ever go out to take a bunch of photos and then come back later to review those photos only to realize that all the photos that you took kind of aren't that great and most of them suck? Slap that like button if that's ever happened to you. If you struggle with taking a good photo, I wanna show you the process that I go through when importing my photos to determine which photos are good, which ones I wanna get rid of, and which ones I wanna keep. Some photographers call this the culling process, but the reality is it takes hundreds or even thousands of photos to get to that one photo that shares the story or tells the vision of what you were trying to photograph. Sometimes these Instagram highlight reels of the best photos that people have taken can sometimes be deceiving. But I'm gonna jump right in and show you these street photos that I took over the process of about 45 minutes to an hour and show you which one of these I wanna keep and kind of how I treat them when I first import them. The first thing I do is grab them all and apply some keywords. Adding some keywords just makes it a little bit easier if you ever need to search for these photos in the future. You can see the first photo is never a good photo. It's always like, oh my gosh, what settings did I leave my camera on the last time I shot? And what the heck are we shooting now? Started off with a strong photo of the CN Tower. Not really anything I wanna keep, but what you'll notice is Already, this has a two star rating, and that's because my camera and a lot of cameras actually have a rate button on the back of it that as you're going through, let's say you're doing some shooting, you're on the street, maybe you're even shooting a wedding, and you have some downtime, if you hit that rate button as you're going through reviewing your photos, it will save that, and then you can come in right away, and like, let's say I wanna see what my favorite photos were, I can say sort by rating, and then it will put all those photos in an order so I can see the ones that I've picked right up front. Shooting about 400 photos here, I've got about 50 or so that I've pre-selected, which represents about 15% of the photos that I took. But now I actually need to go through these sequentially to determine if the ones that I pre-selected were actually good, or if we need to get rid of some of them and pick some different ones. When I'm first warming up while taking photos, I tend to shoot the same thing, just looking for different settings or different things that I wanna try. In this case, I was interested in this bus sitting at this intersection, and at first I saw this bike going by and thought I'd try to get them in the composition, but initially there's just a lot happening, and so none of these photos are really any that I wanna keep. I was shooting on the 70 to 200 in this case, which is the lens that's back there, and so I'm shooting really compressed. This is an interesting lens to use for street photography because you're not gonna get really wide overall scenes. The nice thing with the 70 to 200 is that you can zoom in on details. In this case, I thought the headlight, the, it was getting darker out, and so the headlights from the bus looked sort of interesting, so I took a photo of that. And then I'm, as I moved up the street, I saw some people to take photos of, kind of shooting through this glass pavilion. Again, creating layers. Maybe not the most interesting subject, but one that maybe I'll keep. Again, really just shooting and starting and getting some inspiration is what these first First photos are. Even as I walk down the street, this photo is underexposed because I'm still trying to dial in my settings. I'm shooting at one over 200, which is important if you're shooting with a telephoto lens to get that shutter speed set to at least your focal length. So if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, set your shutter speed to one over 200. That'll help you prevent uh, any shakiness that results in blurriness in your photos. And then next you'll notice I have a ton of these images taken from the same spot. I'm shooting some at 70, some at 200, but this is a really popular iconic photo spot. And one thing you'll notice is that they're actually building a building right in front of it with the steel and the concrete going up right there. So I wanted to experiment a little bit and see if I could get a version of this photo that was maybe a little bit more unique than some things I've done in the past. I started off shooting this photo at a faster shutter speed. You can actually see here, this is one over 320. That lets me again, stop the motion and make sure everything in my photo is super crisp. But one thing I wanted to try was actually doing a slightly longer exposure. So if I jump down to some of the photos here, I actually started shooting at around one over 50. And the idea was that I was hoping to get some trails in my photo. So the the longer your shutter stays open, you can actually get kind of people blurring out or these long, uh, long exposure trails in your photo. I don't think I ended up getting any because I was simply too close to the people. I was, I was shooting this kind of like at street level, pointing it up and people were walking right in front of my lens. With this photo, I was shooting at one over 40 and because there are people walking by in the foreground, I get a little bit of color blocking as they walk in 
front of my lens. Again, when you're shooting a lot, you just get some photos that are completely unusable because someone walked right in front of my lens at the wrong time. And then you get other ones that are like this where the image is half obscured. I don't think I ultimately ended up getting this shot the way I had imagined. There's a few here that are maybe interesting where the person is framing the CN Tower a little bit better. Maybe I'll find one out of those 50, 60 shots that I took. And then because I was on a longer shutter time, that one over 50, I saw a bike coming and thought it'd be really interesting to do one of those panning shots where as the bike is going, you're following with your camera so that you can get the background blurred out, but then the subject is in focus and nice and sharp. Here I'm shooting at one over 30. So the background, I'm doing this panning motion. You can see his face ends up being just slightly blurry, but you know, in this case, because I'm shooting 70 millimeters, it's really tight. And so it's really hard for me to track him perfectly and keep him in frame. So either I should have backed up a little bit or shot with something a little bit wider, like a 35 millimeter or a 50 millimeter. Something like that's actually pretty interesting. You have two people framed and then the biker in the middle. That's probably why I gave this one a three star as I was reviewing it in my camera. As I'm waiting for another bike to go by, I'm just kind of shooting down the street to see what I get. Then I went back to this composition and shot some faster shutter speeds just so I could get a, a nice crisp version of the image. And then these ones were nice because we were getting a streetcar coming by and I'm shooting at one over 20. So it's probably a little bit slower than what I can successfully get holding it by hand. I could probably do one over 20 if I was again shooting with a monopod. This one's not too bad, but he's a bit blurry there. So these ones didn't work. And then this, this lady was taking the same photo that I was taking, so I just thought I would take a photo of her, kind of fun. Tried to take a photo of a taxi, but again, 70 millimeters, I couldn't get the whole taxi in it. And you really wanna get one of those orange Toronto taxis. They would probably stand out a little bit better in this photo. And then as the TTC was coming, there was just people standing by the side of the street. And so I'm kind of doing some longer exposure here. Again, one over 25, so now I'm holding it steady the car is going by, so the car is blur blurred, but then the subject is nice and sharp and in focus. And then I shot this one, and I thought it was interesting because the pavilion on the interior has these grids, the ceiling grid with all the lights on it, and as you pan, they kind of blend together and create this really interesting uh, background effect. I gave this one a four star, but because, again, there's some error involved when you're panning. The photo is a little bit blurry and it looks like I was actually focusing in on the pavilion in the background. And then just some subjects kind of standing, waiting for the bus. I thought this was kind of cool. Lining it up with the architecture is, is a big thing that I'm interested in, really framing a subject in context with the city itself. And that's where you get all of these photos, just people kind of standing, waiting for the bus. You know, I'm waiting for something interesting to happen. Someone being on their phone isn't too interesting interesting. Street photography is kind of this balance of waiting for the right thing to happen, but then being ready when it does happen. And then a runner came and I thought I would try to do a panning shot of that, but because she was wearing black and the building was black, it, it kind of blends in and doesn't give you the separation that you need, especially when you're shooting on those really compressed uh, telephoto lenses. And then we've got the Uber Eats delivery guy and I tried panning with him. It's always better if you can get them from the front so you can see their face but in this case, I'm framing it between a subject and a light pole. Kind of interesting. I think I gave a few of these some three stars, not quite a four star photo, but interesting nonetheless, and maybe worth putting in an Instagram carousel. And then the streetcar came in and I've got this guy in blue, the streetcar in red. So again, I'm looking for that contrast. And I think I, again, I rated a few of these as three star. This one would have been good, except for the fact that he lined up right with the kind of black in between portion of the streetcar. So his head is gonna blend in and not be quite what I wanted, but his stance looks good. So sometimes with street photography, it's a hit and miss where you just gotta fire them off until you hope you get the right one. This one's actually not too bad, but looks like he's maybe a bit blurry because he's moving and I'm staying still trying to get that blurry streetcar in the background. And now we've got a few more of a bike that came by just as the doors of the streetcar were opening. And you can see it focused first on the streetcar and then I refocused and got him. This is a three star. Actually, I'd probably rate this one a four star because he is 
His face is in focus at one over 25. The streetcar is blurred out, the door is open. We've got a pole in there. It's just kind of got all these elements that are really working together for me. And as I'm panning, you can see some of the in-between shots are a little bit blurry. Again, that's a factor of how stable I'm able to hold it and how the image stabilization on the camera is doing. So not everyone is gonna be a winner. This one I rated a four star and it's probably because he's in focus. We've got nice color blocking in the background, but we don't see his face. And he's moving a little bit, so his bag is a little bit blurry. Not too big of a deal. His face is in focus, which is the important thing. So probably between this one and the last one you saw are gonna be the ones I wanna keep. Once I've decided which ones I wanna keep, sometimes I'll, I'll use the number pads to give them a colors. Like I could say, rate this as six, and that will turn it red in the grid, or I can hit the P button, and that will flag it as picked. Now, when I go back out to my photo set, you can see it's got the four stars, it's red, and it's picked. And one of the things you can do later is if you have these filters open, you can actually say, uh, show me the ones that are picked, and it will show you just the ones that you've picked, or show me the ones that are red, or show me the ones that don't have a label. And it's a good way if you kind of have like an A quality photo and then a B quality photo or ones that you want to print, maybe you label those ones as red and ones that you want to post to Instagram, maybe you label those ones as yellow. Again, you have to figure out a sorting and a labeling system that makes sense for you. And then we've got kind of like a final set as I was standing at this streetcar stop. Another bike came by with two streetcars. If you can get two streetcars or like two things happening at the same time in your photo, it makes it a bit interesting. You know, maybe that one there is a keeper at a three star. It would have been nice if maybe he was a bit closer and the streetcars were a bit closer to compress the scene a little bit more. And as the streetcar is pulling up, now I'm thinking people are about to get on, people are about to get off, people are crossing the street. And so we can get a lot of commotion happening in the photo, which can make for an interesting photo. The lens doesn't always get it perfect. Sometimes it'll back focus really quick and I'll get these out of focus blurry bokeh photos, which I tend to delete. I guess what's happening here, maybe that's like the stoplight has gone red or the lights from the pavilion or something. But even putting something like this in an Instagram carousel as like one of the photos in a, in a maybe like a transition can be kind of interesting. And then I just jumped out into the middle of the road here to take a, a few final shots of the streetcar kind of a, a classic Toronto composition. And then the last set of photos that I took was outside of Roy Thompson Hall. I started shooting down an alley again to really compress the scene. The building in the background has this really nice gridded glass pattern and I thought it would make for an interesting background. But as I was standing in this alley, I actually looked back and there was this, I guess an iron fence. And I thought that would make for a good foreground. So I could have the fence in the foreground shoot through the fence, shoot towards Roy Thompson Hall, and then hopefully get a person in the mid ground and just like frame them right at the right moment. So, you know, there's one here of this girl, which isn't too bad. Some cars are passing by. And I thought, okay, I really wanna get more of the building. So as I'm shooting, I actually dropped down a little bit and then started to shoot up. So I was closer to the ground and then kind of had to wait for people to come by. And I'm just line up my focus point, hoping that, you know, at the right time, somebody will come by. You want them to have like this open stance. So when they're closed, like this guy is here, it's not as interesting if I jump ahead to a photo like this, where they have an open stance. I'll go back a little bit. So what do I have here? I've got a street car. Ideally, if you could get the fence, a person, a street car, and Roy Thompson Hall, there's four layers that you're bringing in. And again, with the 70 to 200, really being able to compress that scene here, I'm at about 92 millimeters. So these are the things as you're looking at your photos, deciding what do I wanna keep? What do I wanna get rid of? And also thinking the next time I go and shoot, how do I wanna frame this photo? And so it's really this process of, like I sat in an area for 10 minutes, really trying to perfect the composition, really trying to wait for the person to move by at the right time. You know, in this case, there was a worker. Maybe that's a little bit more interesting because there's stuff going on. I don't know if I should be worried or not, but this pigeon was, completely giving me the evil eye. Of all these photos, I ended up settling with this one as a four star photo because the lady here is in an open stance rather than in a closed stance and that adds more energy and more excitement to the photo. Maybe the only other thing I would have liked to have had in this photo is like a streetcar going by just to block out some of that uninteresting foreground. And as I'm finishing up, it kind of just starts to taper off. I'm walking down the street, nothing really exciting. 
and then a few kind of photojournalistic street documentation photos. Most of the time when shooting street photography, you really don't know what you're after until you actually start to take photos and enter that feedback loop of seeing what works for you and seeing what elements you can add to make your photo more interesting. The aim here is really just to encourage you to get out, to have fun and to experiment because even the best photographers don't take a perfect photo every time. So if you found this encouraging, go ahead and leave a comment down below, hit the like button, or if you wanna take your photos to the next step of editing, I recommend checking out either of these videos here. They will walk you through that process and getting started with editing your photos. And until next time, peace.